Okay, this is a K5 setup. Um, I got it in a state sale for eight bucks, which is a crazy price. Um, I thought about reselling it, um, but honestly, the new system with the slide up and thing, those are really popular and they're very smart. So I thought, you know, rather than trying to make 20 bucks on it, I will put it to work because I do like um, this, the cartridge system. Um, I like the way this works when I need it. And um, I can't, I can't basically buy this for eight bucks. Um, and so I'm going to go through this whole system. If you see one of these K5 systems and you don't own a Craig system at all, it's an amazing system. Um, you could do a lot with it. So pick it up if you find it on the shelf, lonely, sad, and waiting for you to take it home. All right. So let's get to the video. Okay. So what I've got here is. Basically, I got this at an estate sale. It's the K5. I have the K4 system, and it's pretty good to me. Um, it's the K5. It has some improvements. I'm curious to see what they look like, but um, they, they can't. Okay, so I had a K4 jig from Craig, and so that's kind of the classic kit. Did a lot with it, really like it a lot. Very simple, easy to use. Um, there's still a lot of things I like about it, but I got my hands on this K5 from uh, basically a place that does estate sales and it was eight bucks. And so I figured, should I resell it? And I think that the new style where the block travels up and down are so popular that the value of reselling it uh, isn't gonna be equal to what I can do with it in terms of putting it to use. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is there are some pretty cool new refinements like the auto max clamp with the adjustable pressure. Um, and this is interesting. This is kind of fun. It's a little, like a, it's a little stiff for my old hands. Slide it back and forth, but maybe it'll loosen up. Um, and then I do like the storage boxes and the wings and everything along with the swiveling dust collector. So there are some nice little refinements. Um, yeah, but most of all, I can't find my K4, and so I really need to use this system to make some pocket holes. <clears throat> and so that's why I'm really <laughs> looking forward to getting this thing out of the box and getting it up and running. So I'm going to measure this, how big it is, and then I'm going to find a piece of plywood long enough or wide enough to set this system up and attach it. And in the video, I say that these are attachment holes. They're not, those are for uh, a depth thing for doing repetitive um, pocket hole procedures. What, um, here's where you put your fasteners on to attach it to the board. So, and then also on, on these cases, there's some recess spots over here, I'm still in frame. So yeah, so pockets here and here and two each on either side and um, that's what you need. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it to work. That's, uh, that's what's coming up is you're gonna see me kind of dig through the box and how I got to this. Came out with that whole new system where the, um, the pocket hole cartridge actually travels up and down at an angle to match the thickness of the wood. <clears throat> so you don't actually have to like figure anything out. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of you on how to set the jig. Um, so let's see. But I got this for I think eight bucks, which is a crazy amount of money. It's a hundred and fifty dollar kit in its day, probably. So it comes with a booklet on how to build skills. It comes with an owner's manual. Let's see am I in frame? Yeah, owner's manual. Um, here's the jig mostly itself. And then there's a clamp. It's a nicer clamp that came with the K4, so that's exciting. It's a, um, I think it's a little bit of an auto adjust function. Yeah. Auto Mac. Let's see if I'm still bring it in here. So yeah, an auto Mac. So this will help kind of figures things out for you. Has this guy, this, um, I'm not actually sure how that works. I'm going to look at the instructions. Comes with some screws. And then um, down in here, unpack that. 
And then this is a clever one if you haven't seen it. It actually is a cartridge. We'll get this back. It's still in frame. All right. So apparently you pull this pin, that slides out. It has these holes, and this is spring-loaded here for setting those pinholes. What happens is, you can see, I'm going to come a little closer to the camera, you have your different heights. So this is the old style of doing it. If you're doing half-inch material, or five-eighths, or three-quarter, or whatever you have, you would set that line on the side of the jig sticking out. So let's say you've got three-quarter inch material, you lock it in there. Here's where it gets interesting. You can do the same thing on this guy. Let's see if I'm getting it in there right. Upside down. Oh, there it is. All right, so here's the pin on this guy. This just this guy just unscrews. Let's see if I'm still in the right place. So when you set that, let's say you got to do a sheet of plywood. Lock that in. Grab your clamp. And let's see, is it the big one? I think it's the little one. So you twist this out of the way. You twist that out of the way. Put it into that pocket. And there you go. You put this onto something, you clamp onto it, and now I can run pocket holes into my hands. There's a little bit of a lip here, so you catch your, your um, board, your sheet good that you're trying to put holes into, and then this just, you just drill your holes in here uh, as normal, and then you just snap it off, move it over, snap it on, snap it off, snap it on, snap it off. And you can do really large pieces of um, sheet goods with this handy accessory. Um, let's see if I'm still in the right place here. The last things are these new and improved storage boxes. And they have these dovetailed edges that I can see here. So these guys, let's see. Okay, so there's some dowel fillers. Some filler dowels, those are for plugging your holes. Uh, I'm not sure what that's for. Um, some screw length accessories, so apparently you can set your... That'll help speed up setting up your screws. Not sure what that's for, but these will... Connect on here just like that. And then you have some holes here. We're attaching this to a board, and then you do have a rotating dust port. And same thing with this box, you have some goodies in here. Okay, so there's your, your drill bit. Here's a gauge, I saw this, somebody speaking about this. Here's a label, so you know what screw to use with which material. So there's a guide, and you can put that right in the box lid. For reference here's the classic long overly long square drive bit okay wow may seem like a mess here right now and it kind of is but so these are the fasteners uh, you get a kind of a medley so you can try out the different lengths for the different materials the longer the screw the thicker the material so we'll set those aside um, not going to need the owner's manual. You don't, there's, um, it's adequate. I actually called and I had some questions and, uh, the gentleman that answered it, Craig was fantastic and very helpful. So here's what I figured out. Um, this is also a skill builder book. I don't need that right now. Um, I just need to figure out how to put this together. The plan is to put it on a board with the wings, those dovetails. So they'll connect like that. And, and then I'll put my sticker up here on the lid so I know what size of screw goes with which material. Um, so we figured out that's the clamp. It pairs up with this guy. So you can do the edge of 
Again, let's say you have a sheet good, a piece of plywood, clamp it on there. Um, you run your screws, the cartridge goes in there, and then you unclamp it, you slide it over, put your screws in there, and then you end up with your pocket screws ready to attach and do big sheets uh, edge to edge. Um, so that's those guys. That's the cartridge that goes in here. Oops. It goes either in there with the quick connect. Set your height. That's three quarter right there on the lines. Uh, there's your plugs for filling the holes. So this is this is where it got interesting. Um, I wasn't sure. Oh, sorry, that's the long driver. Um, when you get down close to the wood um, to run the pocket holes or run the screws into the pocket holes, um, you have to angle this down. And it's got to be room for the chuck or the tool to grab onto it. So these tend to be really long. Just a heads up. Um, so this, I thought these were for attaching the uh, jig to the board, and they're not. They're actually for, uh, this is your um, stopper. So you put this on here, and if you need to put a, like let's say you're doing 20 or 30 pieces, um, you put this in here, and then there's a little screw that'll run in, in and out in this hardware package. And what, what's that, what that is for is, let's say you need to go to a certain point, put in two screws real quick, pull it out, and do the same thing like 100 times. That's this hardware kit. It just screws in here, and this helps you adjust back and forth for the material. Um, that's your stop collar. That Put that onto your drill bit, depending on how far you need to drill into the material. Um, it's one of the longer unboxings because there's a lot to know. Um, and so this, I'm going to make sure you can see it. This has what looks like the material thickness. So you think, oh, this is half inch, that's three quarter, that's one inch. Actually, how it works is, let's see if I can get them back. The fasteners, the fasteners come in three quarter inch, one inch, two inch, and two and a half inch for different materials. So let's say that's inch and a quarter. What you do is you put this guy, you put the snoot into the block. So let's say, let's say we're going to do three quarter inch. What you do is it's not the step that says three quarter inch. It's actually the fastener that you use with three quarter inch, which is the inch and a quarter, either in the Fine for hardwoods, again, fine for hardwoods, or coarse, again, coarse thread, the heavier thread, for softer woods. So you drop the drill bit tip into this, and then your stop collar is going to go, let's see, just bust these out. Plug. So those are the parts you're going to need for the stop here. And then, so you take your stop collar, drop that dude on there, tighten it up. Okay, now that is set. Just set that to three-quarter inch, get that out of the way, put your material in here, and you are now ready to make pocket holes. So that is that. That is the mystery of this setup. I don't know why I thought that, but it's not the Flipping Genius channel. Um, this is the parts that you need to go with this guy. So again, this will be, this will be going in here. These will regulate how far it travels. And you're just going to have that little screw right there to maintain the distance that you want if you're doing just a ton of things where you're going in and out locking that in place for repetitive materials this is this is the other wild thing that i learned about that i actually called in i, I had to ask what is a spacer block for so let's say you build something like a bookcase or you have a friend borrow your kit and he puts the screws way too far apart so let's say that there's some wiggle here and it doesn't feel secure. So like 10 or 12 inches, that's too far apart for pocket screws. The spacer blocks will compensate for 
the distance. So if it's if you're going into this corner, you need to add a screw, or you're going this way, so you need to attach the top. You got to make some pocket screws. You're going to drill them there, and then you're going to put a screw in here to attach these two areas. Um, my understanding is this is set up for three quarter inch if you use it just like that. Um, and if it's one inch for whatever reason, it's a pretty weird problem. But uh, the people at Craig have took the, taken the time to figure this out. Um, if it's thicker, there's a little pocket there that sets up. So now if you need to put a screw in and the material is one inch thick and you want to put that block on so you don't have to think about where to locate it, you set it up and then there's a place to put a screw here to hold it steady. You go in once again with your drill bit, you make your pocket screw, and then you just run your driver in there and then you're set. So I think that's it. You press down on this to adjust it. It's pretty stiff because it's brand new, but that's the key is for adjusting for your material thickness. And then this is your tightening lever here, along with your, once again, rotating dust port although i'm a little weirded out that you can pop it off and you can flip it so apparently it just snaps on and off um, so not amazing it's a little weird that it doesn't extend further but it is what it is um, and so there you go that was it's an unboxing moment brought to you by Flipping Idiot Productions, um, spacer block and all.